Welcome to Wales Tech Week 2021. Thank you to our partners. Enjoy the session. Hello, Kroiso, and thanks for joining this Open University session at Wales Tech Week. My name is Rhys Griffiths, Business Relationship Manager at the OU in Wales, and we'd like to showcase some of the tech innovation happening here at the Open University. Now, you might not know that the OU is a vision of Prime Minister Harold Wilson, who wanted to create a university of the air, and we continue to strive to be open to people, places, methods and ideas. We are a local university to everyone in Wales, as students can study anywhere, on their kitchen table, in their office, or on their train commute to work. When most of us think about the OU, many of you may recall the black and white programmes on BBC Two, or home experiment kits as the OU changed the way we think about university learning. But the OU is much more impactful than you might think. It's all around us. Our academic research and technological innovations are impacting our daily lives, making us greener, healthier, and safer. We're going to hear from two researchers at the Open University whose expertise has been translated into further use within a wide range of sectors. You'll hear how our innovations and technologies have been put into use from submarines to avocados, from batteries to water treatment. I'm delighted to introduce you to two of our leading academics within the university. And first up is Dr Geraint Morgan, aka TAF, who you may have probably guessed has strong links to Wales. TAF is a research fellow and knowledge exchange lead in our School of Physical Sciences. TAF, over to you. Diolch, uh, Rhys, a uh, croes o pawb. Um, as Rhys says, I'm a proud Welshman. Uh, I'm also a Welsh speaker, uh, although I'm seriously out of practice, having lived in England for over 35 years. I was born in Carmarthen and brought up in Aberystwyth, uh, and I've worked at the OU since uh, October of 1993 having completed a degree and PhD in analytical chemistry at the University of Leicester. My PhD was actually sponsored by an American company, Dow Corning, who are based in Barrie in South Wales. The first half of my career was spent developing instruments for Rosetta and the Beagle 2 space mission with Professor Colin Pillinger, who many of you will know was a proud Swansea University alumni. I've given many talks on my work in Wales, including science at the CENEV, uh, I took the Rosetta model to the Maybod National Eisteddfod, uh, and I've talked at many schools. For the last 15 years or so, I've been leading the agenda to translate our space technology know-how to um, develop solutions to challenges back here on Earth. And so for the next 10 minutes or so, that's what I hope to do, to give you a flavour of the impact of our research, how some of this relates to Wales, and also to finish with a call to action so uh, allow you, hopefully, to start working with us in the future. So space missions push the boundaries of science and engineering. Missions such as Rosetta and Beagle 2 require the development of large multidisciplinary skills and teams. So we put together chemists, physicists, hardware engineers, software engineers, electronics cell engineers, uh, and even geologists and microbiologists. You need to build these big teams to allow you to turn the big scientific questions into requirement specification for instruments. Once that's done, you can develop an analytical solution that can produce the data to answer the big questions, such as, is there evidence for life beyond Earth? But you also need to take into account the constraints of the mission. So space missions make us think outside the box. We don't have mains plugs. We don't have engineers we can send up once we've launched. It's no good uh, having a screwdriver if the mission has already launched. So we need to make sure that in the design, 
we make things light, small, low power, whilst also being able to survive being in a vacuum, intense radiation and extremes of temperature. We also need to make sure that these things are very strong and able and robust and able to survive shock and vibration, both on launch, but also on landing. So when we successfully did this with a Rosetta mission to a comet, we managed to sniff and identify that the building blocks of life are on a comet after a 10 year, 4 billion mile journey around the solar system. The other thing that came out from the project is not only have we developed solutions, but also a very strong multi-skilled team, which is a very powerful resource for when you're looking at challenges back here on Earth. Um, in terms of impact uh, from such projects, so far the biggest of which has been our ability to develop a air monitoring system that can be used on all future UK submarines. As I'm sure you know, submarines are an important part of the UK's continuous at sea deterrent capability that has kept the nation safe for the last 50 years. Submarines are basically big metal tubes, the length of a football pitch with over 120 people on board. And during operation, they'll go underwater for up to three months. So a key designer for any new submarine is the ability to accurately monitor the air quality on board to ensure the health and well-being of the crew. In January of 2010, we were approached by BAE Systems and the Submarine Design Group, and they engaged my group based on the work we'd done on Ptolemy to help them develop a new technical solution for this challenge. The funding itself came from the Ministry of Defence. The two-year project was a great, great success, and we have now managed to develop a system that will be used on board all future UK submarines. This has broken a 30-year American monopoly on the supply of such systems and for the first time created a UK capability. The primary uh, beneficiaries of this are a company up in North Yorkshire called Analox. Um, and we, they will now provide this service to the UK Ministry of Defence for the next 30 plus years. So we've helped them create over a dozen new jobs, but also change their business model for the next 30 years. In terms of technology that can uh, derive directly from the space missions, then it's probably this system, which is a valve uh, technology that we have patented at the Open University and is derived from a technology we had on the Rosetta mission. The valve we have developed is small, it's light, but most importantly, it has no plastics nor rubbers in the wetted parts. It also has a very low leak rate, whilst also being able to survive very high pressures. These unique capabilities mean it's getting a lot of interest currently, both as an enabling technology for satellite propulsion systems, but also the growing hydrogen economy with the drive to us sorry, with a drive for us to replace petrol and diesel cars, buses and trains with hydrogen as the UK and the rest of the world moves towards a net carbon zero by 2050. Our valve is potentially an enabling technology for that. The work we're doing around this has been supported by one of our colleagues in Cardiff, Gitto Owen from a company called Uniglan. And Gitto is a domain specialist in hydrogen, and he's also the founder of the Welsh Hydrogen Trade Association. And he has been helping us develop new contacts in this sector with a view to taking it forward and using it in commercial products. So Gitto has been a very important part in us uh, starting negotiations with a series of Welsh companies who are active in this sector. As an analytical chemist, I'm also interested in developing new ways of measuring things, as well as developing the tools to actually do measurements outside the lab. So one of the areas we've been researching, along with DEFRA and the Animal and Plant Health Agency, through a pilot study, is evaluating the viability of developing a field portable instrument that can detect the presence of bovine TB in and around badger sets. As an article in Farmers Weekly 
uh, identified. In the year up to August of 2019, nearly 13,000 cattle were slaughtered on farms in Wales because of bovine TB. So we are hopefully going to help by, if successful, we can provide a new tool that can support in the proactive management of bovine TB in the UK. And if we can do that, then it should significantly help reduce the devastating impact on our Welsh cattle farmers. Other activities to do with food and drink are, we are helping Scotch Whiskey Research Institute develop uh, novel assays and algorithms that can help them detect the presence of fake or adulterated whisky. Whisky is one of the biggest net contributors to the UK economy at six billion pounds per year. And it's all driven by the quality and the brand recognition. So whiskies, as we all know, can get very, very expensive and incredibly tasty. So we are helping them in developing screening methods that would allow them to be able to identify and remove dangerous or just you know fake systems from from the from circulation we're working not only with swri but also with ibm research to develop algorithms that can actually uh, do this automatically so use, using ai and machine learning to actually look at the profile of all the compounds in a whiskey sample Similarly, we can also uh, look at avocados and sniff avocados. Now, avocados are increasingly becoming popular, especially amongst the millennial, millenniums, so whatever the word is. Um, and avocados uh, are shipped all around the world to the UK. The big problem is that avocados, uh, one in five of the avocados is likely to be damaged or brown inside and therefore they go straight into the bin. The reason they go brown is because they can be infected by different uh, fungi. And um, we have worked with the Natural uh, Resource Unit Institute at uh, Greenwich University to allow us to be able to detect the aroma that comes off an avocado if it is infected. The application, of course, is to actually stop the shipping of these avocados around the world and, of course, reduce our carbon footprint. The last area we're working on is in the sniffing of chickens. So chickens are produced in massive quantities in the UK. I believe the latest figures are 21 million chickens are slaughtered each week, so over a billion chickens per year. Um, and chickens, whilst obviously very tasty, uh, are the primary source of food poisoning in the UK. There are over 300,000 food poisoning cases per year, 15,000 people are hospitalised and 80 people uh, can die per year uh, and with 80% of those food poisoning cases being caused by a bacteria transmitted by chickens. So we've been working with a company to try and see if our sniffing technologies can actually detect the presence of this bacteria and actually again using machine learning turn that into a tool that can be used by the farmers to effectively allow an early intervention and the treatment of the problem before it gets into the food chain so my last slide really is to do with um, how the open university can provide support and also help well startups in taking their business forward. As Rhys said earlier, the OU is unique. We're based in all four nations. So we have extensive reach and we also have a significant number of partnerships. So the lady in the, the picture is Eleanor Davis Farn. She's one of Wales's new breed of entrepreneurs. She's also the cousin of Gareth Davis, the Scarlet's Wales and Lions Scrum Half. I used to babysit Eleanor when she was a child uh, and since She's obviously grown up and started her own company, making products for curly hair. As you can see from the picture, she has very curly hair herself uh, and recognised there was a gap in the market. So after a call home and a chat between her parents and my parents, um, I was able to put her in touch with a collaborator of mine 
a guy called Bruce Green, who was a formulation chemist and the director of several successful companies. Bruce is also the inventor of a hand sanitizer, which is marketed globally. So Bruce was able to help Elna take her company from her kitchen table and into a factory setting. He's also supported her in establishing new business contacts and distribution uh, networks, as well as providing her with support on assurance and product safety. And as you can see from the press coverage, her business is growing exponentially. And she's even now based in Dubai. So as I say, the OU has an extensive network of academics and we can all have our own networks of people and we're always interested in providing support for companies around the world. So that's it from me. Um, I suppose I should just finish by saying that we're always looking for new partners. Um, we're always looking for new projects, interesting challenges to be addressed. Uh, and we also potentially have funding to help that activate. So if you're an SME, and you are interested in what we can do, then please contact Rhys and he will put us in contact. Jochen Bartaf, um, it's fascinating, fascinating uh, to hear how the capability of technology in one area, obviously in this instance, space can have so many applications across other sectors and other other problems that are out there and, and, and help provide solutions in, in, in those particular spaces. And um, equally sort of fascinating to, to understand more about, you know, how, how powerful um, smell can be in, in terms of solving problems. Um, thank you very much for, for sharing just a snippet of some of the work that you're involved with um, at the Open University. And next, um, I'd like to introduce you to Professor of Energy Technology, Shatish Krista Murphy um, from our STEM faculty. Shatish, over to you. Um, hi again. My name is uh, Satish Krishnamurthy and um, I have been um, born and brought up in uh, Chennai in India, the other side of the globe, and um, did my PhD in um, uh, physics, particularly on material science at the uh, University of Newcastle upon Tyne, not far from here. And um, uh, I, was, I was funded by overseas research scholarship scheme that was available that time. Then after that, I spent a good eight years in Ireland, in uh, Dublin, uh, Trinity College Dublin and Dublin City University uh, for eight years working and researching on nanotechnology and nanomaterials and how this can help the society and societal benefits. So I'm a material scientist and materials engineer, but we are working on solving the real time world problems. And then uh, 2012, I think 2012, October, I moved to Open University, took a lectureship position here in materials engineering of School of Engineering and Innovation and started my own group as nanoscale energy and surface engineering. And uh, when I started the group, we set the mission of the group as socially oriented research that has direct benefit to society. So how we can, as a material science and technologist, our research, particularly on nanomaterials, nano is like small, we are talking about 10 to the power of minus nine uh, scale. So how this small materials or small particles can help in solving world, world challenging problems, which are world challenging problems that includes local, regional and national problems. That is what our machine when we started. So we started like a one man army, like only myself. And then now, as my other colleague said, it's research is in these days is a interdisciplinary research or multidisciplinary research. And everybody, the, the platform is there for everyone to work with. So we are working with both um, UK partners that include Open University, and also some of them are in Swansea partners I have in, um, in Wales and in India and the US. So we have a really strong collaboration, which we created the network. So we set the base that we work on partnerships, these research, because not one person can do so solve these world challenging problems. So I've been telling all you this story of challenging problems, world challenging. Then what challenging problems which we are solving? Maybe you may ask. Yeah, of course, there are two serious challenging problems which we are working on. One is energy, another one is water. Without water, we cannot live in this globe at all. 
as my colleague says that he is working on the space, they are still finding whether we, they can find water in space. If you find water in space, you can live. If you come back to the earth, yes, this is a serious problem. If you work on sustainable development goals, it's called SDGs, is developed by UNDP, United Nations Development Program. And uh, this, they identified water energy as a critical uh, vector for sustainable development for entire universe, to be honest. And I'll, I'm going to throw you some scary figures, why we need to work on water, okay? And the scary figures are, one in three children does not have, in the world, does not have access to clean water. One in nine does not have water at all. We are talking about this. And we are in this generation where we think that we have everything, but we don't. And globally, 80% of fresh waters are contaminated. This is the data coming from water aid. So that is where we are heading to. As, as there is more and more population grows, more and more requirements started. So we thought that we can the technology answers uh, this heavy challenging problems. And what we are focusing in our thing, we are, have, we are funded by, our research is funded by uh, European Union, Royal Academy of Engineering, British Council, UK, India grants, and then um, some industrial grants and European Union as well. So we have a team of eight to nine at OU and about several collaborators. We are working on this problem. So we make advanced functional materials. Okay, many people would have been heard about graphene. I think so. So why why I have to hear of graphene? Of course, you need to know about graphene because the Nobel Prize originated in UK. The graphene is originated in UK. It's a very simple technology. Graphite, which we call the lead pen, pencil we call. So that is what the graphite is. So the, the graphite, originate of graphite is, they used to write initially on the sheep's to identify that yeah this is this sheep has to be is defective sheep and this sheep is really good etc that's how the original graphite came in writing and the, there are clever scientists are there um, they what they have done is they take one layer of graphite and that has become a graphene world thinnest material that is single atom thick that is in nanometer scale so we extract those nanometer scale graphene and also we have it's simple chemistry cooking so we cook some materials like uh, earth abandoned low cost materials and then work on can we purify this water using uh, sunlight renewable energy so we have plenty of sunlight everywhere okay of course in uk it is not that so but i am going to that as well there is enough sunlight in UK to trigger the work which we are doing currently because we don't need like um, the sunlight in uh, Africa, what they get, or in Spain or in India. So we need an adequate amount of sunlight to trigger the chemical reaction. So we are working on a solar fuels. We use the sunlight, capture that sunlight, okay, and form that as an energy, electricity, and the earth abundant materials, which I told about graphene or some other nanoparticles, we use them and then use some advanced chemical processes to uh, degrade the dyes or the organic pollutants, which I have talked talking about that, to clear. And then we can recirculate that as a clean water. As my colleague, another colleague has said about um, hydrogen valves. So we are also working on hydrogen generation. So say for example, um, the clothes which I'm wearing, text, textile, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, it's offensive here. From top to head, we are all contaminated. How are we contaminated? Yes, of course, we are contaminated because we are using all the chemicals. Of the production of these chemicals involve a lot of fresh waters. Fresh water I'm talking about. For making this shirt, 3,000 tons of water required to make this shirt. Okay, fresh water. And once the water has passed through the system, they are not going to reuse it because it carries dyes and organics. So when we are working in a project funded by European Union, where we are looking at how we can reuse this water using a activated, chemically activated nanotechnology, we use this nanotechnology as a tool 
to reduce the organics. And it is simple. Yes, we have done that. We have proved in our lab, we developed the prototype of that. And then now it is going in a commercialization stage. We not only that done, done that, we have, have patented in-house plasma printing device, which we made. It is pretty much like a torchlight. With the torchlight, we, we pass an ink over the torchlight. The torchlight, which I call is the light, which is nothing but a plasma. So we pass through the plasma and print onto any substrates. And this will be exposed directly to sunlight and the dyes will be passed on one side. And then the chemical reactions will take place uh, pretty much like when you put a, uh, what do you call um, uh, a very nice Guinness, you have to wait for the things to settle, the foam to settle because the chemical reactions are happening. These the same chemi same type of chemical reactions are happening here as well. So the chemical reactions involve some hydrogen and carbon break bonds will break. And then not only we clean the water with, with the hydrogen and oxygen molecules, we also be able to get hydrogen out of the waste, waste stream. That is a real source of energy. So this project is very interesting project which we've been working and this was really uh, triggered this the amount of hydrogen which we generated really triggered tata steel in swansea which we are working as a partner so um, they are planning to fund a project on coating of new materials for hydrogen generation and they need a lot of hydrogen for their heating systems so that is one project which we are working on sustainable development goals let me take you to the second project. The second project is not far from what you know. Tesla cars, what do they have? Batteries. Mobile phones, what do they have? Batteries. You know what I'm coming to. Yes, there are more mobiles than human beings in the planet. Every house has two mobiles, three mobiles. What will happen to those batteries? The batteries has a definite lifetime. So our technology, we are working on partnership with industries in India and also in UK to see whether uh, how we can recycle the batteries on lithium ion batteries. Trust me, 2030, the UK government clearly said that by, by the end of 2030, everything will go into electric vehicle. Of course, it's a very good thing because we are directly attacking the climate change, CO2 reduction, et cetera, which is very important for uh, the healthy living of the society. It offers many problems by many challenges which we face. The first project which I mentioned is also addresses the climate change because the, the water, we are all talking about energy harvesting. There is another one called water harvesting and water storage. People forget that part actually, that is also important and similarly, this project which we are talking about recycling of batteries is also directly addressing climate change let me tell you how it is so for making of batteries particularly lithium-ion batteries we all know that lithium we, people often talk about lithium oh it's a very expensive material it's very very low in uh, it, if you start using more lithium and then we may not even have another another 40 years we may not lithium will be end up but it's not only lithium. There's another material called cobalt, which is available only in African regions. And the more and more cobalt we take, it's, it's another problem as well. So we are, we are working on how we can extract the end of life lithium batteries, which already been used in the car or mobile phones and extract the materials and make new products out of that through circular economy model. So how we can easily, I will, I will clearly tell you how we can do this. Okay, so for any batteries, we need some electrodes. That's what they call us. If you open up the battery, you see a dark carbon thing. Carbon is an electrode, then there's an encapsulation for happening. So when the carbon is there, uh, like this pretty much, then the lithium will go inside out and then it started breathing. When it started breathing, you know that Breathing, as you can clearly see my hand, that it's breathing, that's what. So the carbon started exfoliating. Then it becomes graphite, graphene. So we extract new materials and then coat, like what I said for photocatalysis or catalysis, which I told in the previous project, we can take the materials from here and put it in the other applications. 
So I have been used a lot of words here. Plasma printing, I said. I said about um, chemistry here. And I said also engineering. So we can, we are a group of interdisciplinary people or chemists, engineers, and designers. We are all working towards solving a major problem on water, recycling of batteries. And all these components which we are taking out will be utilized either as a solid state battery or for other applications for wastewater treatment or even solar cells. So our research directly will change the way we live by creating a huge value chain and also a socially oriented research that will have direct benefit to society. And we want to train engineers and scientists and tech entrepreneurs towards adding a value chain to the society. Because we are in a very, very important situation where the, where, the, where the world is changing every day we speak, something or the other comes up. And we want the future graduates to be prepared for that, those challenges. How they will prepare for those challenges is they need to understand the societal, local, and also global challenges. And our research groups are open for collaborations to do this because, as I said, no technology or no materials can do wonders unless if we talk to each other and then collaborate with each other because the problems will be different in different sections, including in England itself. The problems in the South will be different than the problem in the North because they have a different types of hard waters and we have a different type of soft hard water here. So even within the UK itself, the changes are happening. So imagine how we are talking about the global situations. So co-development, collaboration uh, is the three main important uh, ingredient to address the global challenges. And we are happy to collaborate with anyone uh, from Swansea or from Wales, Wales, et cetera, companies as well. As my other colleague said that we, are, we have some really good, good um, um, initial funding to collaborate. And then we are good in winning grants, et cetera, to address the global challenges. We have a really fantastic research labs, uh, top-notch international research labs uh, in, in my group and also in OU as well. So you, you will be surprised what you will be seeing when once you come here and have a lovely week. Thank you, Shatish, for giving us an insight into your work and helping us to understand how you're having an impact on how the world uses energy in a more sufficient way. It's phenomenal to think that in today's world, one in three people still don't have access to clean water. And it's fantastic to hear the research and innovation that you're doing is having an impact on this. I hope you enjoyed those insights into, into the exciting world of research and innovation. As you've heard, the OU is having an impact across a range of industries and on the international stage. If research and innovation interests you, please do get in touch with us. We also work with employers to unlock the potential of their workforce and flexible online learning shaped around your needs. We offer a degree apprenticeship in software engineering, along with a range of free online courses on our OpenLearn platform. We also have short courses and micro-credentials that focus on skills gaps, such as leadership and management, cybersecurity and cloud technology. If you'd like to get in touch with us about developing your staff's learning and development needs, then please email me on the address shown on screen. And that just leaves me to say thank you very much to Geraint and Shatish for sharing your insight and research with us today. Thank you very much for watching. Jochen Vaur, goodbye. Thank you for watching. Rewatch all of our sessions online. Thank you to our partners.